exciting encounter, isn't it? And to bring you the commentary today, Brian Moore, a cup winner himself, and alongside him, Nick Mullins. Thank you, Sonia. A cup winner, Brian, over a decade ago. My, how the years fly by. Well, it feels like we ought to be tucking away the last morsels of Brecky rather than settling down for the biggest domestic match of the season so far. But here we are. This really should be a cracker. A couple of teams who've lifted the cup eight times between them in the competition's 30-year history, but two who haven't contested the annual end-of-season showpiece final for longer than they would care to talk about. Uh, despite a list of absentees that includes Austin Healy, Neil Back and Lewis Moody, Leicester can still field 11 full internationals. England skipper Martin Johnson's fit to start after tweaking a hamstring, while the back row isn't noticeably weakened, with Corey, Cronfelt and Balding filling the holes. Gloucester have been filleted by injuries as well, but they can still pick eight who've played at test level. The key decision, as Nigel was saying, how to fill the centres, Henry Paul and James Simpson Daniel link up for the first time and significantly England prop Trevor Woodman is fit enough to take his place on the bench. I don't know what's going on yet. Matt. Well, there seems to be confusion. What exactly is happening? Well, there seems to be some confusion here at Franklin's Gardens. The officials are both looking at each other trying to find out what's going on. We believe there's been a fire alarm and the, on the overhead uh, PA system, the fans are being told to leave their seats. Matt Dawson, this can't help pre-match pre preparation, can it? I can understand if Northampton were out there playing or uh, maybe it's some kind of... I think, uh, to be perfectly honest, during the week, um, they have been doing some testing. I'm, I'm sure that there's not going to be a problem. Um, and then everyone can settle down and, and get on with the game. It is a little bit disrupting for the players. Of course, you know, it's a big moment coming out, ready to play. I think the Leicester players have probably got the better idea and have just gone away under the post just to uh, calm down a little bit, regain themselves. Um, but uh, it's, it's very disappointing. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult because you see the players now want to go over to the officials and find out exactly what's going on. But I think everyone seems to be going back to the seat, so hopefully we can uh, get back to the game. Yeah, I think we've got the idea that there's no evacuation because the fans are certainly staying put. The shed from King's Home have decamped to Franklin's Gardens. They're keen to see what's happening. They're not going anywhere. So we can try, I think, second time lucky, why not, to our commentary team, Brian Moore and Nick Mullins. This is what happens when you kick off at quarter past one. Goodness me, never happened with the old three o'clock kickoffs, Brian. It's an interesting point, though, isn't it? Because the players would have been psyching themselves up in the dressing room and Dino would have been picking out some well-chosen words and all of a sudden you've just got to keep that momentum going somehow. Well, it's only been five minutes. I mean, these sides now are professional. A lot of them have a lot of experience and I don't think it will have any bearing on how they, uh, how they start this game. I think the both, both sets of forwards will be uh, wanting to tear into each other anyway. And... Uh, as long as the ball is in front of them, they won't, they won't mind this. They'll, yeah, it's, it's inconvenient, but it's not going to make a big difference. Our referee today, by the way, is Steve Lander, and it's his decision, it's his responsibility. He is in charge of all things, not just offsides at Rocks and Malls, but also the safety of the stadium, and there is Steve Lander. And he won't let the match kick off until he is absolutely sure that this is just a false alarm and there isn't any things seriously wrong just a reminder if you are switching on and wondering why we haven't kicked off there's uh, been a fire alarm at this franklin's gardens ground and we're just checking out what the problem is let's have a listen to the announcement well i hope you uh, heard that but the game is to go ahead steve lander's happy the safety folk around the ground are happy and that 
false alarm will have delayed us for a couple of minutes but we'll be underway very shortly bit of previous by the way between Leicester and the referee in the final seven years ago Steve Lander was shoved over you may remember by Neil back after he awarded Bath a late cup winning penalty try and here they are again well we had a short sharp shower an hour or so ago which will juice up the pitch a little the pitch is in decent Nick Northampton we're training on it first thing this morning ahead of their semi with London Irish tomorrow and with the shed and the crumby stand having made their respective ways to Franklin's Gardens we are underway and Ludovic Mercier kicks Gloucester off taken by the new Irish hero Jordan Murphy Wait there, back three. and the first clearance for Sam Vesti the 21 year old making a name for himself this season in the absence of Austin Healy and he finds touch well, if I were Gloucester, that's the sort of area, the half-back area, where I'd be trying to concentrate on Leicester because that is a link from a very powerful pack to a very powerful back line. And uh, I would imagine they want to give them as much rubbish ball as they can early on and put them off the stride. Olivier Azam with the first line-out of the afternoon, and he was heading for Mark Cornwall. Knock on, knock on, but it was scrappy. Red. It's uh, a gloss that put in, but uh, you're quite right, Brian. The line-out is going to be so fiercely competed for this afternoon. There's well, you've got in Leicester, Leicester's pairing, Over the mark, okay. Kay and Johnson, two of the best in the world, and, and Kay especially is very, very useful. Stay behind Leicester me. with a slight weight advantage Get behind it, scrum as Gomesall waits to feed his fly half, Mercier. Down the line to James Simpson, Daniel. Getting used to the geography of playing at outside centre. He's normally on the left wing. He's going to have some readjusting to do. And the first penalty of the match goes Leicester's way. It's the fullback, the South African Tinas Delport, who wasn't rolling away from the tackle. I understand what you're saying. I'll Not quite deal with it. Sure about that. It, wasn't he the, it was a player who was tackled. He do not have to roll away from his own tackle, does he? He has to let go of the ball, I know that, but. Uh, he has no responsibility to move, I wouldn't have thought. Let's have another look. Well, he goes in. Uh, there we are. All he's got to do is let go of the ball now. now well, I can line, understand please. if he's not letting go of the ball. Now, maybe he isn't letting yeah. go of the ball, actually. He's hanging on to the ball rather than yes. rolling away. Yes. Come back. Set the line again. Both sides, you stay at the line, please. You stay off him, OK? There has to be that gap between the two teams, that metre gap. The heaviest of English rugby's heavyweights squabbling over tickets to Twickenham and the Power Gen Cup final. Taken in by Johnson, swiftly away by Hamilton to Martin Corrie. Get away now, Who has man. been stung by a mission from the England team this Six Nations. Vesti. Leon Lloyd. And outside him, Jordan Murphy, but it was overcooked by Sam Vesti. Well, it's become a favourite move uh, around England, as this. And Jordan Murphy, I looked over and suddenly saw him 20 yards in front of everyone else. But unfortunately, the kick not placed well enough for him. A bit too shallow, I think. Yeah, it needs to be further and longer. Just a foot too far. Azam looking for Rob Fiddler but the ball wasn't straight and that means that Leicester will have the put in at the scrum this is going to be concerning for Gloucester because uh, the Wait line outs are a crucial part Wait, of any game ball. and if they can't Engage. get decent ball against this Leicester pack then they'll struggle the second one that's not gone right Jamie Hamilton to continuing up. to deputise for the injured Leicester scrum half Harry Ellis who seemingly Wait for the is the number one number nine these Let's days but ball. Ellis still recovering from a knee operation, so the experienced Hamilton at the club for over a decade. Stay down. Picked up at the base of the scrum. And I think it was uh, Andy Gomesall who was causing the trouble. Hint of a high tackle from Mercier. High tackle. And the referee says it was a high tackle. Mercier on Ollie Smith. 
Well, let's have a look at this. He didn't seem particularly bad. It, it wasn't a definite washing. I don't know. Uh, he, well, he ended up high, didn't he? I think when he first went across him, it was across the chest, actually. And that's forward. There, that's low there, and then it goes high. So it's not a, not one of the usual ones. I don't think uh, there was much in that, but I can see why Steve Lander thought he had to give it. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting. Yeah. Don't tell me I'm Fourth going all down. meeting between these two in the cup. Leicester lead the okay. series 2-1. Gloucester beat them 6-3 in the final of 1978, but Leicester won the last encounter at King's Home three years ago. This to take the lead at Franklin's Gardens. Yes. Tim Stimson, who will be back here again next Friday with the England A team against Italy. Gives Leicester the lead after five minutes. It's Leicester three, Gloucester nil. Well, that was a familiar sight in uh, Leicester colours, wasn't it? Tim Stimson banging a long ball. Settle them down, they'll be pleased about that. Interesting to see Leicester reacting quickly to the quick restart from Gloucester. But it didn't go the required ten metres, but probably questions in Gloucester's minds they just need to try and disrupt this Don't Leicester pack because me. when they get into their stride That's they're a well-oiled unit well of the two forwards the Gloucester pack are having more trouble than the Leicester pack Leicester settled earlier um, that doesn't help you just give them points away and then you don't kick the ball on. 10 yards immediately on the back foot free kick to Leicester come here front row please let's hear what he has to say he's wanting to talk here, to the please. Gloucester front row Roncero, Azam and Deacon. This is what I'm going to say now. We've had four scrums, and none of the four scrums have you waited for me to say engage. You've got to crouch, hold, and wait. If you're not prepared to wait, then it will be a free kick. Understand? An indication, Brian, as we see Nigel Melville watching on, that they want to get into that Leicester pack quickly. They don't want to give them time to settle. Away! As Josh Cronfelt goes on the first charge, Dorian West knocks on. Advantage, knock on. Back feet Playing three. the advantage. Gloucester will have possession if nothing comes of this. Here's Henry Paul playing at fly half. Mercier, long ball, floated out looking for Jamie come Forrester, back, but will come all the way back knock on, no advantage, for that no earlier yeah. knock on. The front row, though, will be an area concerning Gloucester because Phil Vickery went under the surgeon's knife yesterday. Trevor Woodman is back on the bench after being injured for England against New Zealand, but Roncero and Deacon definitely firefighting at the moment. Yes, you see uh, Jake Forrester there. I don't think that ball was meant for him, but this is the area in which Leicester will be looking to use their considerable advantage. Well, sorry, experience advantage. Can you stay down? Gloucester's put in. Scrum turned. But it works in Gloucester's favour. Mercy eight. This is Henry Paul on the loop. Now here's Marcel Garvey, who really has burst onto the scene this season. Nine tries. Here's Jamie Forrester, just turned 22. Part of England and Gloucester's long-term future, Jamie Forrester. And he needs a big game if Gloucester are to go forward today. He does, and just, in, just as important, Simpson Daniel as well. Tinius Delport, there's a lot of pace out there, probably even more pace than Leicester. But uh, Leicester counting well there, the drift defence is working well, it's checking. And there needs to be someone in the middle there that takes the ball over the gain line or creates, creates a space. Break because there's an injury to Graham Roundtree. There's Dean Richards. Roundtree, by the way, in the team that beat Harlequins and Brian Moore in the final a decade ago. So while Brian is nicely wrapped up in the commentary box, poor old Graham is still having to bash away in the front row. Well, he doesn't look too bad on it, does he? He is. Is that old? I used to play against him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're partly responsible for those ears. Leicester throw. Tap back by Johnson, who's over a hamstring get tweak, away, which was worrying out. Leicester after training on Wednesday. Hamilton to Vesti. This is Leon Lloyd coming off the wing and shrugging off the attention of Henry Paul. Almost up to halfway. Tim Stimson hauled back by Marcel Garvey and his mates. Leicester still have possession. Vesti to the ground. Leicester have the advantage. They'll have a penalty. Coming in on the wrong side and it's taken quickly 
by their Australian Rod Kay for the backs coach. No hands. Hamilton. This is Adam Bolding. The big blonde haired slab of muscle. But the referee, Steve Lander, says it's a penalty to Gloucester. Hey, I advise you, calm down, please. Holding in the tackle. Well, he's got Another holding in the tackle here. In. Didn't seem to be much wrong there, but uh, oh. I can't quite see that one, but uh, Steve Lander is nearer than me. Well, he's picked both teams for the same offence, and he's not going to give them much time, is he? Well, Tim Stilson is a big lad. 16 stone, look at Garvey. Look at that, drives him backwards. Boom! Get down. That's tremendous. We like that. Attacking line out for Gloucester, well taken by Cornwall. Here's Mercier. This is the big, muscular Jake Boer on the charge. Away, Green, no hands. Good ball for Gloucester to win back. Henry Paul, this is Tina Stelport, the Springbok. Up to the Leicester 22. Gloucester's best moment until Andy Gomesall knocked on. And they have to go all the way back. Henry Paul trying to deal with a tricky bouncing ball. And I think he touched it as well, so Leicester will have possession. Well, just for a moment here, you see left is just... Well, actually, the, I thought there was a gap there, but there wasn't one, so it was a bad option in the first place. But not only that, Andy Gomesall managed to knock the ball on. It would have been running into Martin Johnson anyway, so maybe not the best option, but that sets them back. But uh, interesting that when Gloucester do get some ball, they're looking dangerous. There's a lot of pace out there. 35-year-old Dorian West feeds the line out. Ben Kay, six foot six and 18 stones, gathers at the tail. They've lost it. Azam regathers for Gloucester, and that's the 10-meter line. Keep the men on their feet. They dive into ground. No advancing. I'll tell you what I don't understand at the moment with Leicester's forwards is that they've had a they've, they've had no problem in the lineouts. Another part of they're picking up and dumping on. No, they had no problem in the lineouts. And yet they sort of complicate them by two or three passes around there. You know, their best has always been when they catch the ball and drive. Shot of Terry Fanalua. And the young Fanalua. Mercier. Henry Paul. Looking for position. And finding it. He's taken some stick over the last couple of weeks, Henry Paul, particularly after that performance at Toman Park in the Heineken Cup match, but he's a big, strong character. Well, I don't think his best position is fullback. I think this is his best position where he can influence the game, you know. They can put him in areas where they want him to be when he's at fullback, and he can create his own things here. Ben Kay, the England lock, who really is a, a line-out eating machine. Stimson. Jamie Forrester wasn't far away from that. But Stimson finds the touch there, Stimson. Try in the quarter-final at the stoop against Harlequins. Both sides, form a line. It's been a good contest so far, though. Neither side giving anything away. Gloucester shortening the line out. Rob Fiddler at the front. Go on, that's Gloucester the on through and through. Gomesall, Mercier. Nice linking in midfield, here's Simpson Daniel, and then the linking broke down, looking for Jake Boer. Come back for the knock-on. Coming all the way back for the knock-on. Talking about Henry Paul, playing at inside centre, I'm really looking forward to seeing James Simpson Daniel at outside as well, he could do some damage there. He could do, but he's got to pass to the man there, I don't, I'm not sure there's just a breakdown in communication, because certainly James Forrester didn't look as though he knew he was going to get that ball. Playing at centre for the first time. Had a brief spell there, you might remember, right. for England last week. One of those uh, Cheers, dubious blood bin moments. Nigel Melville and Dean Ryan, two old war horses with wasps <laughs> in their time. Yes. Been to cup finals and won Hi, cup man. finals, but now Rob. very much men of the West Coast. Crash and hold, engage. <laughs> Open it up. Still in. Stay Pass for Vesti was mislaid. Henry Paul gathers, but again it was knocked on. 
Andy Hazel on this occasion, but they're going to come back for the earlier one. Oh, I tell you, that, that's such a tragedy for Gloucester because if they could have handled that ball, they were two on one out here. You watch this after the breakdown. That's an appalling... Um, Crouching hole. Just out here. Engage. That ball can go. There are two men outside. And they would have been away. Stay bound, nine. Approaching the quarter hour mark. Leicester with that lone Tim Stimson penalty. No hands, with no the hands. advantage as Mercier breaks over the Not 10 out. meter line. Gomesall back to Paul, who is very Go much involved in the man. first 15 minutes. Here's Simpson Daniel, some juggling. Now we've seen him operate from this position in the past. But the ball was not forward. It well, was a matter Gloucester, of inches. Yeah, the Gloucester fans don't like that. They think it went sideways. Well, let's have a look. I... No, I don't think that's a knock-on. I don't think that's a knock-on. Seeing Simpson Daniel in that position, and your mind goes back to that amazing try he scored for England against the Barbarians at the tail end of last season when he skirted around a bloke called Jonah Lumu. One of the tries of the season, and Gloucester will be hoping for something similar today. Bestie clears. Garvey happy to shepherd it into touch. Well, I can only think with that sort of tactic that Leicester are happy that they are getting into the Gloucester lineup because he's just stabbed the ball forward about 20, 25 yards but it'll give Gloucester the throw, so maybe Leicester think, well, we can disrupt sufficiently that we, uh, we'd we rather play the rugby in their half. Get in the line, please. Gloucester trying to shorten okay, their line out, but um, the referee, Steve Lander, said it had already formed, so they have to go back to the full one. And Rob Fiddler is the choice okay. at the front. He's a star in the line out, but he also does the dirty work. Gomesall to Paul, under lots of pressure from Kronfeldt. Two Kiwis together. Look at this from Henry Paul. Until he was derailed by Graham Roundtree. Mercier. Stimson goes back. Doesn't find touch, can't call for the mark because he's outside his 22. But Murphy can run. So can Leon Lloyd. This is Tinas Delport. Who is another speedster? A couple of tries for him against Get Saracens hands. in the quarter-final. No hands, Red. Gloucester are a man down at the moment, by the way, because Rob Fiddler is still receiving treatment on this near side following the line-out. Well, it does show, doesn't it, when uh, Henry Paul here we see it. Just play the game. Don't try and Martin Johnson not allowed to do that. Actually, hold him in the mid-air. I think he's just landed badly. Down I don't middle, think it was please. anything dangerous, but. Uh, ball comes out here you can see though Henry Paul now he's getting the ball in his hands you know how influential he can be and that's where he plays best when he's he's able to come up he's able to take the game by the scruff of the neck and do his own thing here going outside West there outside Garforth they're only front row they're not gonna they're not gonna but Graham round two I think gets him eventually oh does he knock that on yes he does actually but you can see he's already you know, he's already having an influence in this game, which he just can't have at fullback. Well, those of you who know your knockout cup history under its various guises will know that Gloucester were the first ever winners of this competition. They beat Mosley in the inaugural final all the way back in 1972. A little stat for your for you pub quiz fiends. Mosley actually ended that match with 12 players because Nigel Horton was sent off, two were injured, and they were in the days before substitutes were allowed. We're waiting, so we're waiting, Gloucester guys. winning, mostly here. finishing with 12 wait, players. Wait. And Time Gloucester on. have gone on to win the cup twice more since then. They beat Leicester 6-3 in 1978, and then shared the trophy with Mosley 21 years ago, and that was the last time the Cherry and Whites, albeit jointly, lifted the cup. Will it be there the year no hands, this year? No not out. That's the gloss of the 22 at 10 meter line. Henry Paul again, trying to involve him as much as possible. Skips around Stimson, up to the Leicester 10 meter. Mercier, this is a race for Delport and Garvey. Oh, and Ollie Smith was in the right position. Can they smuggle it back on the green side, Leicester? Looks as if they have. Wait there. 
It's West acting as scrum half. Murphy, and under plenty of pressure, West, Murphy, and significantly Ollie Smith avert the danger. Well, tell the player here, this is the second chip. The first chip was the one that caused it, and I thought for a second that Gloucester were going to be in here now. He's got to let go of the ball. Come out. There. That is a lovely little chip, isn't it? Henry Paul gathers it well. He just couldn't get out the tackle here to play away. Otherwise, if Gloucester had got quicker ball, they would have been away in the corner right because there were men over just for a second. Yep. I think that there was certainly the Gloucester crowd in front of me was screaming at the referee for a penalty here. So as soon as he's there, he's going to let go of that ball, and I don't think he did. But he really won't care because he got away with it, but I think there's a case for a penalty. Gloucester, in the meantime, have made a substitution. There's Rob Fidler. His afternoon is done. He's been replaced by Adam Eustace. 24-year-old England A-lock, and he is on now, but that line-out was nicked by Leicester and nicked by Ben Kay, who is rightly establishing a reputation in that area, as the All Blacks will know, back in the autumn. Hamilton to Stimson. Finds touch, and we can go back to the touchline and back to Sonia. And Robert Todd would be playing today if it wasn't for the fact that the RFU rather threw the book at him in the week. What do you make of the way, particularly Henry Paul playing at inside centre today, one of your positions? No, I think he's doing a very good job. Um, he's like trying to distribute the ball out to our wings and get us um, a bit more width in the game so we can uh, move Leicester around. Confident though of the way they've started? Uh, very confident. If we can just secure a bit more uh, of our set phase ball and uh, retain it during the phases, then uh, I think we can cause Leicester some problems out wide. Thanks, Robert. Robert Todd suspended, by the way, for three weeks after a high tackle on Saracens' Kieran Bracken. That's why he's talking to Sonia and not wearing the number 12 shirt. Penalty to Gloucester. Again, Leicester players coming in on the wrong side of the mall. We've said it so often, but you have to come in behind the back feet of the rearmost player. Well, I wondered when one side was going to start doing this. Gloucester driving the ball away, and there you see Graham Roundtree Got to come in from behind, not from the side. And that is surprising. I thought they should have taken a pot at goal there, surely. Certainly kickable. Well, he didn't have the best of nights with the boot for the French A team here at Franklin's Gardens a fortnight ago. I'm sure that wasn't playing on his mind. They just have a sense that maybe they can pick up the seven points rather than the three. Zam throws long. Finds Forrester at the tail of the line. Drop goal from Mercier. Just squeezes to the left of the posts. Opting for the penalty might have been the easier one. Well, shades of Johnny Wilkinson. Apart from the fact that Johnny Wilkinson puts him through the post, it's nearly, well, it's very close, but uh, I can't help thinking that this is, this is not going to be a game which has got many scoring opportunities. And if you've got one, I think you should take it. It certainly, uh, certainly kicks a goal. Should have been a simple take by Martin Curry, but he knocked the ball forward. Here's Tom Bine. Played against Leicester for sale in the cup final of 1997. Henry Paul again, not for the first time making the break. And if Jamie Forrester could have hung on to the ball, there would have been options. Well, Gloucester actually stretching Leicester at the moment, aren't they? I thought that... Uh, here we go. He's Same that man, man again, he's playing well, he's the only need to wriggle from the tackle and you can't afford those. It's a relatively simple pass, should have been taken. Yes, we're waiting, wait please. Crouching hold, engage. They have their moments, Gloucester, which will be encouraging. They'd be more encouraged though if there were points on the board. Absolutely, it's crucial against a Crouching team like hold. Leicester that when you have under pressure, you put some points, it doesn't matter how they come, you've got to put something on them. Because there'll be a time when they've got you under pressure, and they do do that very well. Good Get solid scrum from off. Leicester. Go back with it, nine. Hamilton waits, bides his time as the forwards let's get a nudge on. Stimson. Now then, Paul, lots of men over. It was a difficult ball for Simpson Daniel to gather, but maybe Tinas Delport can resuscitate the move. They'll come all the way back, though, for that very uncharacteristic knock-on from Tim Stimson. 
Well, it doesn't do that very often, but it was a bit of a... Well, he'll know what happens. No, he looked to be looking at the ball. The usual uh, defect is that they take their eye off the ball. Okay. And Henry Paul okay. quickly okay. there. If that flick had gone to hand, Simpson down has a lot of pace, he'd probably been under the course. Good spell of pressure from Gloucester. And they're in the red zone from their point of view. In the Leicester 22. Gomesall to Mercier. This is Garvey coming in off his wing. He is a speedster. No hands, no hands. Doesn't look much, but he's no so hands. hard to stop. Lost the fans going mad because they thought there were hands in the rock. I tell you something, this should be this should be a yellow card. It's Josh Cronfelt. Wait! Hey, hey! Captain, please! Over Jake Ball, the gloss the captain. Be quiet, be quiet, please. Okay, I'm not prepared to have people yelling, claiming, sin bins, etc. etc. Please calm this, please calm this player down, otherwise you run the risk of having penalties with her. Right, right. I'm sure he's going to talk to Josh Crockett. Okay, you're not in the bin because that, that was marginal, but it was still in. Okay, You've right. got to come from behind the back feet, okay? So, it's not being cinnamon because it was marginal, but the warning's there, Brian. Well, he's, he, well, he's, he knows he can't do that. I mean, he knows he's, he, he's not allowed to simply wrap himself around there. And he's got away with that. But he's a very professional player, professional outfit, and, you know, Gloucester only need a quick ball there, and they would have been in. It's all square, and deservedly so. Gloucester have been in the box seat. And they've equalised with 26 minutes gone. It's Leicester 3, Gloucester 3, a penalty apiece. OK, when you're ready, please. Interesting to hear Steve Lander, the referee, telling Jake Bohr to calm Andy Gomesall down, though. He can be an excitable figure. And Leicester, at the moment, are making the kind of mistakes. Jordan Murphy straight into touch from the kickoff that you don't normally expect of the Tigers. No, they're rocking a bit at the moment, so that's ball. again uh, poor restart. Seeds the advantage the side, against the Gloucester. And, hold. Engage. and the net result is a scrum back on the halfway. And Andy Gomesall, the excitable Andy Gomesall, will have the put in. Crouch and hold. Well, Gloucester slightly more of the Stand possession up. there. Well, well, well. Slightly more than half, but it's been. Both of you, wait! The referee trying to wait. Engage! That's Forrester at the base of the scrum, feeding Gomesall, who invites Garvey to have a go. Murphy <laughs> takes Forrester and Bohr along with the ball. It's going to be a penalty to Gloucester. Holding on to the ball in the tackle. There wasn't really much else that poor old Jordan Murphy could do, though, in fairness. No, well, Jordan Murphy gets pinged where Ollie Smith didn't get pinged in a very similar situation. Chips forward, and they're using it well, this cluster. Simply has to let go of the ball there. And uh, he hasn't done. Yeah, but he's holding on to it to stop them getting it, OK? That's two in a row. The referee has just said to Martin Johnson, who was questioning that decision, as he does in most decisions, that uh, that was two in a row. Uh, hasn't threatened the yellow car, but again, not taking the kick at goal. They're going for it. They're going for it. Big throw for Olivier Azan. Tapped back, tied it up by Eustace. Come back! He's actually been attracting the interest right of Northampton. He might be playing him more regularly next season. Adam Useless. Mercier. Paul. Lovely dummy using Mercier. Broke the first line of defence. It's terrific stuff from Gloucester. This is Simpson Daniel. Little shimmy. On your feet! Ball was out. Gomesall found Ray. Sam Vesti in close attendance. Right Minding the blind side. I'm not sure that was the right decision. Leicester will have the free kick as well. 
Well, that's just a waste, isn't it? Even Fabre just picking the ball up and driving there. Something and nothing, isn't it? Very easy for Leon Lloyd there. Oh, that is a monster of a kick from that angle. Oh! From a winger. Well, he must have had only five yards uh, from the touchline there. Yeah, literally five yards. And he's hoofed that. Well, it's, a, it's all of 55 metres. Cup winner's medal against Sale six years ago, Leon Lloyd. The last time any of Leicester's squad won a cup winner's medal. They've dominated Europe. They've found the domestic scene a little harder to crack. And again, it's the closing of the gap in the line-out. Leicester are penalised, so Gloucester have the free kick as the away, Paul, sunshine returns to Franklin's Gardens. Half an hour played. There is absolutely nothing in it, but this man has been a star, Henry Paul. Gomesall to Mercier. Here's Tinas Delport. And here's Forrester, who really can get going, given space. Andy Hazel. Gomesall to Mercier again. Break from Gomesall. Almost an interception. Adam Balding. They're still going, though. Gomesall, Mercier, big tackle from Ben Kay, maybe late. Referee seems happy, and it's been won back by Leicester. I think it was Ollie Smith doing the smuggling on the floor. Now, this will be interesting. Simpson Daniel was hauled out of that ruck, and Steve Lander wants to have a word. Come here, please. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen to what I'm going to say, and listen very carefully. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. The difference is I didn't see that one and got nothing from the touch judge. I saw this one. The ball's coming back. I'm asking him to move. He's moving. You had no need to use your boot on him, and yet you chose to. Punch against you. You continue to do that. He's going to work hard, Steve Lander, isn't he? That was Jamie Hamilton for unnecessary use of the boot. Well, the outcome for Gloucester is the right one for the wrong reason in my opinion, I mean I know he did, it was a little trade and something and nothing, but what he did miss, what he did miss yeah. was, a, it, and this was, I mean it was a quite deliberate one from Ben Kay on Mercier, he'd missed him a long, he, he targeted him and he just whooped him down, and that's very dangerous, very similar to a lot of the South African tactics against England, you know, the backs, when they've passed the ball, they're actually vulnerable because they can't tense their bodies, and late hits can put people out of games, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all different things, but I'm hearing you. So Ludovic Mercier, who notched up close to 500 points last season in all competitions, has this to make it 300 this season. Never close. There isn't much of a breeze, but what there was was enough to drift that away. Well, this is what I'm talking about. You watch this. He's let go of the ball there. One... He has no need to go through with that okay, tackle, he knows now, very well. And Mercy is off balance and vulnerable. Here's the Jamie Hamilton stamp. You see, I don't think there's anything wrong with that particularly. He was trying to clear Simpson Daniel out of the way. Here's Andy Hazel, who really is building a reputation for himself in the West Country. Gomesall to Mercier. This is Henry Paul up against Martin Corrie. Kept out of Leicester's 22. Delport, Forrester. The yeah, Leicester squad, though. Yeah, an accidental offside, a Gloucester player running into another one, but it's all Gloucester at the moment. They're breaking the first tackles, but they just can't quite get away. Leicester just stopping them. Comes back inside. Tom Byne run, running back into Forrester. Leicester have this defensive scrum. And they have been in defensive mode for much of the last 15 minutes. Gomesall hassling Hamilton. But had enough time to feed Murphy, who is in a purple patch at the moment. 
Well, that's what I uh, predicted at the start, that uh, they try and put pressure on the Leicester half-backs. You know, Nick Gloucester really need to get something out of this. Uh, they've had 15 minutes on top, and they've got one penalty out of it. A little over five minutes to half-time. Again, the ball was not straight. And maybe we're just beginning to see why Azam has slipped behind Rafael Ibanez and Jean-Baptiste Rui in the Six Nations in Final. recent times. Well, that's not even close, is it? I mean, that's just a shocker. Not that I ever did that, obviously, but... Uh, no, Azam is a very, very powerful runner and powerful scrimmager, but, but that area of the hookers playing the modern game is much, much more important. It's crucial now in a way it didn't used to be. Interesting to see he's one of those one-handed exponents, rather like you were. Yeah, it's a very new, well, I say new, it's the uh, modern style to, uh, to keep the ball in two hands, and it gives, gives a, latterly I changed to that, because it gives you a little bit more control, especially in uh, wet weather. Take the ball back, and it's easier to guide it there. Dean Richards, well, although I'll be concerned about the fact that they've been under pressure, he must be pleased about the fact that, as a result of that pressure, they only find themselves level. Actually, the last Leicester man to lift the cup in 97. He lifted it along with John Wells after that final against Sale, came on as a late substitution. That's how long ago it is since Leicester Wait, won please. this competition. Wait, please. Wait, please. Catch Breaking and play because Mark Cornwall was receiving some attention. He had a chipped bone in his thumb this week. Stay down. Still on the pitch, though. Four minutes to half time. Ollie Vesti shows some adventure. Vesti need a bit more of that. And because there were too many Gloucester players piling down on top of it, Leicester have the penalty. Well, totally unexpected here from Vesti. Everyone expects him to kick, and bang, off he goes. And he's a pace to get through there. And it's a shame no one could get on his shoulder because he could see out there one, two, three Leicester players, and they would have had the pace to go the length. That's a monster of a kick from Tim Stimson. And it would be just like Leicester having spent 15 minutes in defence just before half-time to go away and steal a few points. It certainly would, but I'll tell you what's uh, interesting me, the touch judge's flag over there is waving quite, uh, quite heavily. That suggests to me that Leicester have got whatever breeze there is. Yes, the wind has definitely picked up. Here's Vesti again, whose break got them into this position. That's the Gloucester 22, and we haven't been here for a very, very long time. We won't be there for much longer either, though, because the ball was not forward. No, oh, Leicester look a bit out of sorts, um, you know, the linking. One quick ball here. Sean! It's much better when we wait, guys. Crouching hold. Engage. We don't have to put much together. Well, if there is a win, that belies it, doesn't it? 62%. Hold. Engage. The penalty goes against Leicester's front row. Get out. Darren Garforth. Uh, Darren Garforth was the man tapped on the back by Steve Lander. Well, he's been a great servant, Darren Garforth. I don't know how long he's been there. He must have been there 10, 12 years. Distinguished career. Two winners' medals, 1993 and 1997. Keep your hands on his legs, please. The last of his 25 England caps in 2000. But with the problems Clive Woodward is having in the front row, uh, maybe there might be a 26 somewhere down the line terrifically taken in by the athletic Mark Cornwall who's won England A caps Outside one still going, still going, still going keep it up Gomesall to Paul this is Mercier, see how this ball reacts to the wind well, hardly at all, it was a terrific kick, he got the timing right there Mercier and eases the pressure as we enter the final minute of the half. Well, look what this does. Because uh, 
Henry Paul is able to play out there. Mercier gets on his left foot, he gets a lot more time. That's his back row and chasing backs. Can't get near him, and he has the option and the luxury of uh, of winding his boot up, and that's the uh, that's the result. Quickly tapped off the top of the line. Vesti to Kafer. Hasn't been the influence that Henry Paul has so far. Leicester's inside centre. Vesti again. Lloyd. Go on, go on, go Hamilton. on. Not offside. Jordan Murphy. A week on from his try against the Italians. It's all a bit loose though. There it is. Wait there, you're offside, get onside. Here's Murphy, and this is Martin Johnson trying to assert some authority as we enter stoppage time at the end of the first half and Leicester have a penalty. Back feet. Well, I wonder if Tim Stimson will fancy this. Oh, he's oh, going oh, for oh. it. Well, what is this, 55? 55, 56 metres. He has got the benefit of whatever wind yes. there is, but uh, well, he's certainly capable of doing it, isn't he? I've seen him do it before. Well, this would be a kick for those of Three. you who know your history of Paul Thorburn-esque proportions. You think of the great kickers down the years, Thorburn, Andy Irvin had a boot on him as well, but Tim Stimson is in that category these days. Anyone watching from Clenethley might want to cover their eyes lest unhappy memories come back. Well, the distance was no problem, which suggests there is a real win there, and well, Stimson is furious about missing a penalty from 56 metres. Well, I mean, he, he sailed over, he had another five metres in him there. Just pulled it left of the post, but uh, it does show, yeah, there is some breeze. It doesn't show up that well on camera, obviously, but there's something there. Here he is again, running it back into the heart of Gloucester's behind, defence. That's behind. the Gloucester 10 metre line, picked up by Josh Cronfeld. Leave now, no hands! Wearing the number seven in the absence of Neil Back. Well, Hamilton was being impeded there by Olivier Azam. They're being pulled back for offside. From the side, offside. Oh, they don't need to do this. Feet. They don't need to do this. Leicester stuttered thus far, and Gloucester's defence has been held. Ian Ryan shaking his head there, he knows it's going to be close. Don't need to give those away, Captain. don't need to give him chances like that, especially this, especially this time, just before half time. Captain, four more minutes. Four more minutes, which will take us up to six minutes of injury time. This is 15 metres closer. It is a real kick up the backside for Gloucester. They've been dominant, but it's Leicester who retake the lead. Three minutes into first half injury time, two Tim Stimson penalties, Leicester three, Leicester six, Gloucester three. Well, this is one of the reasons you would never bet against Leicester with any confidence in, a, in any sort of game, because they are one of the best around at eking out points and making sure that every chance that comes their way, they turn into points. Gloucester have still got time though. Tom Vine released on that left wing. No hands! No, no, Mercy no. eight to Gomesall. Here's Henry Paul. Tied up by That's Darren Garforth. Tinas Delport. Twelve Springbok caps in his time. No hands! Has never played at no Twickenham. Out. How much this match means to him. And somebody playing the Okie Koki with Andy Gomesall. Dorian West was involved, and well, Andy Gomesall can't believe it, but Steve Landers' decision is scrum to Leicester. Well, look at this. Didn't this look very much like the Azam penalty to you? I suppose the difference was Dorian West was right behind and wasn't on the side. So, uh, good disruptive play by Dorian West. Intelligent. He's caught him. 
We've got um, two minutes of injury time left on the watch, but we're going to have a little more because Tom Byme needs some treatment. Just heard Steve Lander explaining there to Ludovic Mercier that he was on his feet, he was off the ground, and he was therefore entitled to do that, to reach across and to disrupt Gomesall. That's the reason he wasn't penalised, Dorian West. Well, Azam was on his feet as well. I just wonder, I think that maybe the difference is Azam was less centrally placed, but uh, it looked very similar to me. There's Tom Byne. <coughs> Been sharing the left wing de details with Simpson Daniel and Delport this season. Getting a go, though, in this cup semi final. <coughs> and up. over two minutes to go Both of you at two the end of this first this half Let's give it up, please. been a right Straight old scrap and up. no more so in that Crouching front row hold. Engage. and if you have those three around you in the bar tonight you'd be safe enough and up. well a lot of pressure there from Rose okay, coming up see both your heads coming out there stay in referee time to stay in will he give a penalty Engage. though if it happens again and up well, part of this, you know, hey, hey, is hey, a hey, delay. Hey, hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ball's going to come in quicker. Crouch and hold. Engage. <laughs> Keep it up. Talking to Darren Garforth. Just twisting the scrum. Stimson. He has dynamite in his right boot. Is there time for one more line out? It looks as if there is. It's an indication of how long ago it is since Leicester won the cup. Their fullback that day was Niall Malone, the Irishman who won get a couple in, of caps with, with a Niall Malone these days. And that is the statistics that Leicester Move will be away, most Green, impressed please. with. Move away. Yeah, it does show, doesn't it, that Gloucester have had a little bit of a problem. That was better, then. much straighter. Adam Eustace was the target, straight down the middle. Henry Paul, has he overcooked it? No, simmered perfectly. Back on the halfway line, meantime. A little debating society has formed. Martin Corry and Graham Roundtree against Roncero and Eustace and that little scuffle on the whitewash will signal the end of the first half and the side who are ahead will have least reason to feel happiest because it's been Gloucester's half really Gloucester and we'll go back to Sonia and both teams have just emerged from the dressing rooms as Steve was saying Leicester lead 6-3 we can rejoin our commentators Brian Moore and Nick Mullins with the slightest of advantages but against the wind Leicester are about to begin their bid for a record 11th cup final appearance they'll overtake Bath but there's the significant news at half time the Gloucester prop Trevor Woodman three months after damaging his neck against New Zealand playing for England at Twickenham is back on and he's replaced Rodrigo Roncero the Argentine in the front row significant news for Gloucester and for England ahead of the Six Nations match against Italy in a week's time, and that's a terrific take right at the start by Josh Cronfeld. But we'll be keeping a close eye on Trevor Woodman, as doubtless will Clive Woodward, the England manager. Cronfeld again burrowing towards the Gloucester 22. Here's Kafer, the Aussie. Long pass out to Jordan Murphy. Didn't see much of Leicester in an attacking sense amongst the backs, really, in the first half. They'll be hoping to change that in the second. Here's Darren Garforth who operates best over two metres. Hamilton, it was okay. an awful pass to Vesti, who did very well to gather. Kafer. Hamilton being impeded by Garvey. Here's Vesti, and now Johnson. Running straight into Jake Boer and Olivier Azan. It's a good start by Leicester, there's purpose. Hamilton on the break. 
important tackle by Cornwall because that just held him up. Leon Lloyd. Can he get the ball away? Wrapped up by Jamie Forrester and Jake Ball, both involved. Hamilton to Kafer. Did well to take the ball high above his head. Kronfeld crying out for possession. To rock. 90 seconds after the restart, Leicester's attack finally comes to its conclusion and Gloucester have the scrum. But a word, Brian, about Trevor Woodman. Yes, England will be very pleased that he's back because he's a powerful scrummager despite his small stature. For all Hamilton, he was away then. The effects of the tackle on him brought him down. It was a good job because I thought he was under the post. Good start by Leicester, but you have to play compliment to Gloucester because they counted well there. Trevor Woodman. Come on, guys, you two, keep it the front out. row for the first keep time since that monumental game against the All Blacks. He was only back in full contact training a week ago. Woodman. He's in the squad. Crouching hole. That Six Nations game against Italy next Sunday, which of course you will be able to watch on grandstand. And with that front row crisis, England are currently suffering. It's a key 40 minutes for Trevor Woodman, as it is for both of these teams with Twickenham twinkling invitingly in the spring here's Jordan Murphy over halfway and Murphy hanging on to the ball in the tackle penalty to Gloucester taken quickly by Gomesall here's Henry Paul impressive first half Tom Byme has Delport outside Delport against Rod Kafer two old stages from the Super 12s Mercier, this is Paul, well, that was Woodman for the first time, and the handling letting him down. Well, that's disappointing, some good play there by Gloucester, just undone at the end, Henry Paul, clever play, pity that ball didn't go to hand, Tom Beim, Tinius Delport's impressed me today, he's been solid, always taking the ball forward. Again, the front rows have been penalised. They give Leicester the free kick. Now here's Martin Corry back here for the A team on Friday. There it is. That's not held on. There it is. That's still a rock. Hamilton to Vesti. Jordan Murphy's kick half charged down. That's the cross the 10 metre line. And a penalty to the Cherry and White. And Gloucester lost here in a cup semi-final as recently as last season. Sale beat them in the semi-final of the Parker Pen, 28-27. Although they had a little more cheer here in the league earlier in the season. Terrific game against Northampton, which they won. Although Leicester won here as well during the Autumn International. So both know how to win at Franklin's Gardens. Now, can Gloucester get this 100%? Because they didn't do that in the first half, and it cost them at times. They've gone important first attacking opportunity here, and they need solid ball. And you can hear the shed on tour. Taken in by Adam Eustace. Mercier eventually to Paul. James Simpson Daniel. This is Tom Byme. It's been won back by Josh Kronfeldt. Oh, no. Hamilton eventually skipping around Simpson Daniel, being lugged towards this near hand touchline. Lloyd. And that's not bad from that position. Well, you could see there from uh, that's terrible ball, really. Gloucester securing it and then just throwing it on the floor. Doesn't give the backs any room at all because the Leicester backs have already been able to come up 10 and they really do need to sort that out because that's that's going to have an increasingly bad effect on them. Sure, Nigel Melville's not happy. Cup winning coach during his time at Wasps and what with all the financial problems going on at King's home at the moment and 
the owner Tom Walkinshaw's cash flow problems all the heartache he's having with his Formula One team it really would be something if Gloucester could shrug off Through the captain, please, guys. financial concerns and reach a cup no, final it's been a long <laughs> long time last in the final 13 years ago when they were walloped 48-6 by Bath which still remains a record defeat in the competition there's Martin Curry never been to an English cup final Martin Curry so many players with so much to play for this afternoon Looking for Cornwall at the tail. Found its way to Gomesall. Mercier quickly to Paul. Simpson Daniel neatly to Andy That's Hazel, right. the That's open right. side That's flanker. Right. That's the Leicester 10 metre line. It's been stolen. Martin Johnson cat weaseling away. Up to halfway. Hamilton finally from the depths of the forwards to the bright sunshine of the backs and Sam Vesti takes it back into the shadows. Hamilton. Has he got the angle? Tina Delport forced to gather. And Delport with a good enough kick. One or two cherry and white clad folk in front of us who think it went much further. Well, it landed about 40 yards further, but the touch judge just said it boomeranged in and out, and he's closer than me. Have a look at that. Oh, are you sure? That's a good 40 yard difference. Big call, that. Can Leicester make the most of it? Corey quickly off the top. This is Leon Lloyd. Well held up though by Andy Hazel, although Leicester still smashed their way into the 22. Lloyd again. Running into Forrester. Hamilton back to Corey. Hamilton again. Now the ball was not forward, according to Lander. Well, a whole period of patient and uh, skillful Leicester build up destroyed there. Saves in the first. Uh, 90 seconds, it's put six or seven phases through. And unfortunately, it's just a knock on at the end, but ominous for Gloucester because that, I don't know why Leicester didn't do this in the first half, take the ball up for the forwards. They've got such a lot of power there. They drive well, gives the backs a lot more room. Mercier off his left boot. Swallow dive from Martin Corry. Murphy. Appeals for a forward pass. And those appeals are accepted. Well, that's funny because if you look, neither the touch judge nor the referee are in line there. Thank Watch you. this. They are right, actually. That's a good guess. Well, I'm not so sure. Oh. Well, look, the touch judge is there. They show <laughs> crowd and influence there, I think. Two sets of supporters who are used to passing on advice to the official, shall we say. Gomesall to Mercier, that sweet left boot. He's trying to pin Leicester back, trying to make sure that Gloucester operate from positions where they might cause damage, but it went too far over the touchline and over the try line, and Jordan Murphy can safely restart from his own 22. Well, it was the right idea. If it had just uh, held up another couple of metres, he would have been in a lot of trouble with Jordan Murphy, but he just put Gloucester back down there. I've been impressed. I must say by uh, Tinas Delport, everything he's done today, he's made ground on, even when he's had players around him, players in good tackling positions, he's always made ground, here he comes again. Here is Delport, one of those players who's never played at Twickenham, despite his time with the Springboks, never played at Twickenham. Gomesall, oh, the ball was never clean. And it's in that breakdown situation that neither side has really been able to exert Well, let's themselves. have a look here. No, actually, they were complaining that he'd, uh, he'd, he had the ball kicked out there, but he didn't. He just dropped it. It's 
to belong to Leicester. Still in, still in. Stay bound, Sharon. Behind nine. They've lost the nudge, repelled. To the two scrum halves scrapping away there. Jordan Murphy against the wind. Finds touch. So close, isn't it? It's going to come down once, one flash of brilliance, or probably more likely one uh, unforced error. Okay, let's go, the opening 11 minutes of the second half have been very similar to what we saw in the come first on. 40. Let it go. Both sides pummeling away like a couple of heavyweights, neither able to find a knockout shot so far. Here's Henry Paul, who's looked as lively as anyone. Delport to Garvey. Back inside to Paul. Sam Vesti making a real nuisance of himself there, and it's hacked on by Tim Stimson, but the ball's in touch on the far side. Well, Marcel Garvey, when he does get the ball, he's an exciting player. But what's happening here is that all the backs are drifting. You don't give him that much room. And he's well taken down by Tim Stimson. And actually, they're quite lucky that that ball went close because uh, there, was one, there wasn't much behind there for a kick forward. They test lifts, by the way, in that big tower over on the stand on the far side. It's a listed building. One or two who are keen to see it disappear Quicker. to make way for new housing. Set the line, you but can't it's um, very much a feature of Northampton. And again, they've been penalised in the line-out. Hamilton, Vesti back inside to the dumper truck that is Martin Johnson. Never lifted the cup, Martin Johnson, but that's a terrific steal by Jake Bourke. Mercy A hauled down by Kay. Lloyd still has work to do. He did it well. Bestie. Adam Balding runs straight at Andy Gomesall. Hamilton. Vesti. Not too many options outside, so happy to go to ground. Murphy, ball was not forward. Tom Vine with the tackle. Well, you can see, well, you don't know if you can see, but Josh Comfell was shaking his head there because he knows out wide here there were only two Gloucester defenders and there were several Leicester players and really straight running and simple drawing of a man and would have created an overlap and he would have been away. 24-year-old from Nace. Yeah, we up. Gloucester have done a good job just settling the ship after that catastrophic Heineken Cup defeat at Munster. They've won the last three matches since then. They've beaten Saracens twice in the league and the cup, and then Bath in their last league outing three weeks ago. It's been some test of character because they were deflated after the trip to Limerick. And we're showing what they can offer today. Here's the South African Delport. Had Garvey inside. Garvey, he is so strong from this position. The first try of the match is a sensational try. Scored by Garvey for the Cherry and Whites. Well, that is brilliant. My word, I thought... I thought several times he wasn't going to make him. He just flew. Which is important here because... The centres hold them and there's a dummy runner there which gives him the opportunity to simple. Well, he's still got a lot to do, hasn't he? Outpaces and keeps going. Fantastic. Leicester didn't do a lot wrong here in terms of where they were supposed to be, but unfortunately men slipped off. Dennis Del pulled that man again. That's good hands, isn't it? Good vision. And Garvey once he gets going, he's very good. Well, he's impossible to stop there. Uh, what that celebrates is, I don't quite know, but... Uh... One, they think it's all over, probably, but um, in that man, Gloucester really have unearthed a sensation this season. Mercier for the bonus two. It's the right side for a left-footed kicker. But didn't get the direction, but Gloucester will be satisfied. It's taken them 55 minutes to make the possession pay 
but this was the try worth waiting for. Yes, you see the runners in to keep the backs honest. Delpo, that's a lovely sleight of hand, isn't it? Garvey, he does the rest, doesn't he? Thought he might have tried to go around in front of the course, make it a bit easier, but uh, that's picky. 55 minutes gone. Leicester, six. Gloucester, eight. Where's your money? Well, a couple of Leicester players are down. They're tired at the moment. A lot of them obviously have been involved in international duties. And uh, that will take its toll, whatever you say. The Rich is a bit concerned there, I think. Steve Booth is about to come on. Leicester's answer to Marcel Garvey. And Leicester could do with five, ten minutes with the forwards doing just what they're doing now. Hamilton to Vesti. Look how quickly Gloucester's backs are up. And there was crossing in midfield, the confusion amongst the Leicester ranks and Gloucester have the penalty. Well, he's right there because the, the player who's a dummy runner does take people out there, look, one, two. If you do that further away from the tackle area, you'll get away with that. Ooh, that's a fantastic kick. Oh. Well, Leon Lloyd ran in front of Henry Paul, and as a result, the Frenchman Mercier has walloped the ball 50 metres back downfield, and Leicester have got some defending to do here because it'll be a Gloucester line-out. It was their penalty. What would you do, Ian? I think a catch and drive, wouldn't you? Need this badly, got to get this right. They go long, which suggests they were trying to open up it for the backs. They get away with it, though. Gomesall to Mercier, Henry Paul. James Simpson, Daniel, and Tinas Delport. The second try within five minutes. Well, that's just a very similar move to the one that brought the Marcel Garvey try. Centres kept in by, kept on his by dummy runners. Ball moved wide and they don't even need Marcel Garvey this time. Look here, centre stay, the two runners there, they split, drifts out and Leicester didn't drift quick enough. And that's well executed. Here, starts to move out, the, moves it across the run, and Tim Stimson is caught, he's too close, he's too narrow. Tinas Delport, thank you. Well, he's played in South Africa's version of the domestic final, the Curry Cup final with Hauteng. How much will that try mean? Again, Mercier with the conversion attempt on the right side for the left-footed kicker. With the wind. Ah! but for the second time in quick succession, there will be no extra two points. But Gloucester will be delighted because approaching the hour mark, his side, Nigel Melville's side, lead by 13 points to six, and it's courtesy of this try from the South African, Tinas Delport. Mind you, one of the things that they've got to be careful of now, I mean, you see the uh, responsibility kickers have today, they've not put the, any of the conversions over, and these missed kicks in terms of drop kicks and penalties, therefore Leicester find themselves only one score behind, converted score, and really they're not, they've not been in the game. Leicester have made the replacement, Steve Booth is on, Leon Lloyd has gone. The converted rugby league star Steve Booth on to try and rescue things for Leicester. Murphy to Tim Stimson. And Hands in the ruck. Leicester have the penalty. Taken quickly by Hamilton. Murphy. Lovely break by Adam Balding. My, that was a show of pace from a number eight. Vesti. Johnson. He will be fired up. Hamilton to Vesti, Kafer, what can the Aussie do? Glues that midfield together, Rod Kafer. Coming all the way back for a penalty. It'll go Leicester's way for offside. Well, actually, I think that's a bit quick. Uh, Leicester still had the ball in an attacking uh, 
attacking opportunity, could have converted it, but it just does show Leicester coming back there. They've got a lot of character in this side, a lot of experience, and the riposte to a two-try reverse has been immediate. If you put this over, you will see where those kicks missed by Ludovic Mercy and Matter. Well, I would imagine that they would go for the touchline here and go for the old-fashioned catch and drive. Well, they are doing, they're going for it. And their line-out has been 100%. And Leicester do this better than anybody, this move. Because they're patient, that man was an absolute master at it. Oh, it's been lost at the back for the first time when it really mattered most. Leicester's line-out misfires. Got us all clears. Straight though down the pockets of Murphy. Some, an attempt to find Steve Booth, but it really was pretty average. And Tinas Delcourt had all the time in the world to call for the mark and fire the ball back into the Leicester half. And that is magnificent from the South African. Well, all I can think is that Jordan Murphy just didn't see Tinas Delcourt there because uh, had he surely seen him, he would have done this. Look at this, not got a lot of room to work in, and he hoofs that. There is, a, there is whatever wind there is on the day behind him, but that doesn't account for what is in effect a 70 metre kick nearly. Okay, quickly down to Johnson from the line out. No, 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 come round. Yeah, you know, please, thank you. Didn't see it, didn't see it. 20 minutes. All right. I think Gloucester, don't see everything. Gloucester have to be careful here. You know, they have to compete and they have to stop Leicester playing, but All they right. don't want to give penalties away because they can't defend those. Listen, Their defence thus far has held and they've counted well, the tackles have been going in. They don't want to leave someone like Tim Stimson kicks at goal that he will put over. There's always this sense that the best form of defence against Leicester is to attack because to try and hold out against such a rugged Leicester pack brings problems on you but so far Gloucester have been full of ambition and they deserve their lead make no mistake Balding he's been a little more prominent over the last five minutes Hamilton to Vesti again Vesti having to stoop Rod Kafer runs straight into Eustace picked up by Dorian West Hamilton Need support quickly. Here's Murphy. It's been not forward though, has it? They don't need the scrum because Gromasol fires high upfield and Leicester will be concerned. Quickly back downstairs to Sonia. Matt Dawson, you went for Leicester at the start of this game, but the momentum is very much with Gloucester. You're going to change your mind. Um, I'm going to have to uh, at this stage, but you know, Leicester are still playing some great rugby. They're just uh, missing out on the final pass. But uh, I mean, Gloucester, Gloucester, even at half time, had a, as you said, had a lot of possession, a lot of territory, but they finished off two fantastic tries. Leicester will be really disappointed. They let them in off set, off set phase, really. Um, but it's turned into a fantastic game, which is what we wanted to see. Thanks. We'll see Matt Dawson playing for Northampton against London Irish in the second Power Gen Cup final tomorrow afternoon. It's a two o'clock kickoff, by the way. Whatever it says on your tickets, it is a two o'clock kickoff if you're going to the match. If you're not, it'll be live here with us on the beat. Fifteen minutes left for Leicester to resuscitate their cup ambitions this season. Gloucester, 15 minutes no away. Hands, no hands! from their first final for 13 years. <laughs> Penalty to Leicester, Gloucester caught offside. Back feet. See what I mean? Leicester are uh, committing mistakes every now and again, but when Gloucester step offside, that's it. They get pinged and there's nothing they can do about it. They get kicked back into the corners by, by Stimson. They really do have to watch this because it gives the uh, initiative to Leicester where they can't take it at the moment by just play. You can see the effect of the breeze though. Steve Booth rescuing a kick that Gloucester will have wanted to win back. Oh, 
there's some intent there. Garforth flying in. They'll have a penalty, but that's the problem Leicester have because Stimson ordinarily would have found touch, but the wind is now so strong that he's struggling. Well, he said you've got to let him up here. Tom Byam doesn't get anywhere near that. Well, the rule is if he's on the floor. Well, actually, that's not true. You don't have to let him up. You don't have to let him up when you're a tackler. You have to let him up if he's on the floor anyway. Am I wrong here? For once, Brian, no. <laughs> Did you ever understand Come referees? Back. No, I, I gave up trying, to be honest. No, but the, the, the rule is, if, if a player is on the floor, you're not allowed to dive on him. But if he's on his feet and you knock him to the floor, as long as you don't... As long as you don't stop him you know, placing the ball. Well, he has to be allowed to release the ball. Exactly. That could be the to, only problem. You don't have to get back up, do you? I mean, there's no... But anyway, what it does do is it gives Leicester another attacking opportunity, and I would think... Decision, please. Leicester, to me, I, you know, they, they haven't kept the ball. They, what they do better than anyone else in the country is they manage to get momentum through the forwards, and they've not managed to do that sufficiently often today. Refereeing decisions, all part of the great, rich tapestry of this strange game called rugby. Well, Andy Deacon is coming off. Deacon's off. There'll be a change in the front row. Still going. More significantly, though, Get from outside. Gloucester and Leicester's perspective, they've got this rolling wall to deal with. They're eight metres short. Josh Cronfelt, I think, has got the ball in his Kiwi mitts. There he is. Gloucester repelling for a moment, and the decision is a Leicester penalty. Gloucester coming into the mall from the wrong side. Well, I told you, Leicester, they, they build this so well because they don't rush it. Many people try to rush this. If I were them, I think I'd be going to stick it in the corner and do exactly the same. And in order for Gloucester to stop this, what they've got to do is as soon as a player catches it, they're going to put him on the floor. If you allow him to stand up, they'll build that platform and you're in a lot of trouble. The man who catches it is going to go straight down. Seven minutes in it. Seven points in it. Twelve minutes to go. West feeds Johnson, finds Kay. Hamilton goes a sniping, but is driven back five metres. Terrific defence from Gloucester. Hamilton was isolated, and Gloucester win back possession. Well, that's fantastic play by Gloucester. Boys today, he's happy. What I don't understand with Leicester, look, they vary the, vary the line out to bring it back there. Why bother? Why not do what he just did before and nearly got a penalty? And because you're in penalty try time soon, they keep taking it down two or three times, you're under the posts. Don't understand that. Come on, the pair of you, open it up, both of you. No, no, I'm listening to nobody except myself. You two keep it open. Engage. Leicester doing well, they've really disrupted Gloucester's scrum there, it's a complete mess. And that really is Don't one for the front row. Yeah, a bit of afters now. as well. Tremendous drive, but that's poor, poor scrimmaging by Gloucester, that's just not concentrating. They've not had uh, much trouble all game, and for a pressure scrimmage like that, for them not Come to concentrate, to me, is not good enough. Could be explained by the fact that Ronchero came on and he's really a loose head. So I do understand that. But he's got to put his, he's got to put his 18 stone in there. Well, they've had to bring Ronchero back on because of Deacon's injury. Another line out. And again, it's been disrupted by Gloucester. And there is Ronchero. Key moments in the game that have not gone Leicester's way. Cleared by Mercier. Terrific take by Jordan Murphy. Kafer. They're going to have to go the long way around. This is Stimson. Ball was not forward though. Ollie Smith, the man who's been penalised. And Leicester prepare to play their last cards. Perry Freshwater, the Kiwi prop number 19, comes on, as does Tom Tierney. 
the scrum half who joined from Munster at the beginning of the season. Well, Nick, if Gloucester are to win this, if they do win it, they will probably look back at that last five, seven minutes and believe that that was, in essence, their finest hour because, oh, there's a... Junior Paramore is Paramore, on. Yeah. Jamie Forrest is the man to make way. Been sharing the number eight jersey with Forrester this season. 34 years old now, but not a bad man to be able to bring oh, on this situation. Oh, no, no. Forrester coming off to a standing ovation. He's had a hell of a game. Worked his heart out. As I say, that last five minutes of defence by Gloucester oh. cru crucial in the context of this game. Freshwater, by the way, on for Graham Roundtree in the Leicester front row. Get it in quicker, please. Okay. Into the final ten minutes. Guys, keep it Gloucester, keep well, who deserve well. to be ahead, are ahead. Get it in. Let it go. Again, Leicester disrupting the scrum enough to win themselves possession back, and they're just beginning to take a little bit of a grip in this situation. Well, they know that uh, Roncero is out of position. Look, he's getting popped out the right-hand side there. You can see he has got to get that right shoulder down and round. He's got to. It's Roncero up against Perry Freshwater. Freshwater playing, by the way, because Frank Tournaire, who normally would have been, is back in France because of a death in the family. Here's Caper. Seven minutes plus whatever's left on Steve Lander's watch to go. Here's Tierney, the tall Irish scrum half. This is Steve Booth. No hands! There's been no way through so far, though. No hands! That's a rock! Almost up to the Gloucester 22. Vesti, Murphy. How Leicester needs some of his Irish brilliance now. But it's not happening. No, Leicester, they are. They can't fault them for effort. They're showing tenacity, but they're being let down right at the very last second by things like that. Mild imprecisions. And they do count at this level. They count hugely. But can they rescue it through the forwards, Dean Richards there? Well, he's a tremendous man. But he, while he would love to be on that field, I'm sure, exerting his massive influence. Oh, okay. Leicester have won the cup five times down the years. And at the moment, with six minutes to go, you would bet against them winning it for a sick. As Andy Hazel goes on a hopeful gallop upfield, but it's all in vain because Leicester have a penalty. Now, this is an interesting decision. Well, he, I can't hear what he said, but... Uh, very much in kicking distance though it's not a difficult angle but there's the answer they're going to go for the touchline again two penalties would square things up and if there is extra time by the way we'll have 10 minutes each way how Leicester would love extra time Another big line out. This one's better. Ben K gathers. They've been here before countless times down the years. Gloucester doing their best to disrupt. Leicester still on their feet and driving. Over the line, try! And I wonder if they are Kiwi hands on that ball. It's Josh Kronfeldt doing the job. Neil Back nearly does. They've got the five points, now they need the conversion. Well, I knew this was coming. Here's the key moment, the patient, look, they get stopped there, but they don't rush it. Get the men back in behind, keep the spines in line and driving. The only way to stop that is you've got to cheat, you've just got to go in underneath it and pull it down and take your chance. There we go. Well, Gloucester several times had opportunities to clear that. And it was really the fact they couldn't get the ball from the scrum. They had three put-ins. Now this is as big a kick as Tim Stimson has had in a long time. This to square things up. 
He's not got it. He's not got it. We've got four minutes plus injury time to go. And Gloucester, hang on. It's Leicester 11, Gloucester 13, and we are going to be set for one hard, fast ride between now and the final whistle. Well, there's only one penalty, one drop goal, one score of any sort in it. And Gloucester, they've paid for the fact they couldn't get out of that area. They had the chances, and the scrimmage creaked ominously and badly. And as a result, Leicester have driven them back over the line and within one score. Taken by Tierney to Vesti. And Leicester will be desperate to get back downfield. Tina Delport will do his best to make sure they don't. Here's Azam. Runs into Martin Johnson. There were too many players diving into the rock and a key decision because the wind is in their favour and Gloucester have a penalty to re-establish a four-point lead. Well, Steve Booth is going absolutely mad at the linesman here. I don't know why quite a wise a winger. What he knows about rookie must be a bit written on the back of the... Well, back of my finger, I thought. So. But what it does do, it'll right, it'll, first of all, it'll wind the clock down. And secondly, it'll keep the ball down there. And thirdly, well, maybe, maybe he'll put it over this one. Well, he's got 60 seconds between the penalty being awarded to kicking the ball. And as the rain begins to fall again, this would take Gloucester a score clear. They have a two-point gap at the moment. This for five and perhaps Twickenham. Twickenham comes into view and the sound around Franklin's Gardens is a West Country sound. Two minutes of normal time to go. It's Leicester 11, Gloucester 16. Well, what can they do now? Proud history of Leicester, but they're facing a facing defeat here. They need something. A try would take us into extra time, but the ball was not forward from the restart. That will be the quickest couple of minutes if you come from the East Midlands, the longest couple if you come from the West Country. I'll tell you one of the difficulties here. Because as Olivier Azam is a converted prop, you watch when he hooks the ball, it's very slow, he doesn't whack it to the back, and that's, you know, if he could get that ball away, there would be less pressure. Scrum was under pressure again, but Gomesol and Mercier combined take the ball up to halfway. He's had a good game, Mercier. He has. Very important. But I just think it's important for Gloucester not to give penalties away now. Well, it won't be enough. They need tries. Although it would give Leicester a position to go for. Ball wasn't straight. It'll be Gloucester possession, and I wonder if that man is beginning to wonder if it's going to be their day. What about those two? Dean Ryan, Dean Richards, two old adversaries. It's a free kick to Leicester in the front row. Still this time, Adam Balding. Tierney to Vesti, Kafer. Just happy to set up position again. Well, it's raining as hard as it has been all day now as we enter added time. <laughs> Penalty to Leicester, and you can bet your bottom dollar they will fire this to the corner. See, this is what I said this is, they mustn't do. If, Leicester, if, they, if they let Leicester take the chances and say, OK, you run the length of the field, that's fine, we'll tackle you. But you can't defend this. They're showing in the corner and there's nothing you can do about it. And they'll probably do exactly what they did before. Four minutes of added time. <laughs> Hasn't really taken them close enough to the line to make the drive over a certainty. There's a lot of work to be done from that position. Now Gloucester needs some big defence here. Taken in by Kay. Now the drive comes on. 
And look at number seven, Josh Cronfeld with the cap on. He'll have the ball, but they're going to have to start again. Another penalty, but it means that the angle's much better. Well, you know what's coming, don't you? As they say, Scud Missile, you can see it coming from a long way off, but you can't do anything about it. Two minutes into added time, and there's the pressure that Roddy Roncero is under in the front row. He's got some defending to do, though. And the cup semi-final boils down to this one movement. Gloucester know what Leicester will want. Can they stop them? There's the first part. Here comes the second. Can Gloucester stop? They've another penalty, and they've got to be careful because we're not far away from penalty try time. Stopping the watch. Let's hear what he has to say. I, I can understand. Captain, please. You want to have a word with Jake Ball? Hello, time's up. We've had two collapsed moles now. If we were to get another one, I would think very seriously about my options. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to tell your team. It means he's thinking about a penalty try. No, 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 not for that a one. A penalty try that he gave against Leicester away, in the cup final in 96 when Bath were the recipients. Well, that's the last thing they want. They'd be better off letting them go over in the corner and seeing whether Stimson can kick the conversion, but they don't want him to be marched under the post where he'll just tip it over. Talk to your captain, not me. Talk to him and listen it's to Roddy him. Roncero. Now, what would be interesting if this Roncero was to come off, they've got Chris Forty, a hooker, on the bench. And that's about it. So it comes down to this then. Gloucester who thrilled us with the two, well, quite splendid tries actually. And Leicester doing what they do best. Hanging on, professional outfit, taking the chances. 25 years since their first cup final appearance in 1978 when they played Gloucester. Can Leicester reach a record 11th cup final? The answer will be contained within the next 60 seconds. Keep the go! Steady arms, Dorian West. Good take at the back by Martin Corry. Now the drive comes on. Corry directing the play. There's the ball. I think West had it. We're going to see. Oh, it's Leicester putting at the scrum. Oh, it's desperately close, isn't it? Leicester having two or three backs in there. But they've been in this tendency. If I were them, I'd go for an eight-man shove here. And it was Dorian West, the man who was eyeing glory. Here we go. Is he there? That's tremendous play by Gloucester. They turn him onto his back. Well, what is interesting with this scrum is with Roddy Roncero barely able to stand on his feet, let alone scrum. If he comes off, the scrums will be uncontested. Scrum! You're going off. Now, Roncero, I think, is going off. Yes, I understand. And Chris Forty's coming on. Now then, this is interesting Captain. because if Forty is a hooker... Captain. They shouldn't here, really please. be having contested scrums, which means Leicester won't be able to go They've for They've already lost man. a prop. This player cannot... says oh, he can't oh. play prop. Uncontested scrum. It's the law. What a key decision. Chris Fort is a prop. They've only got one recognised prop on the field now in Trevor Woodman. Azam can also prop, though. You can see he's gone to the loose head position. They're not allowed to push in that scrum, so Leicester have to do it the hard way. Enormous decision. Tierney feeds the backs. Can they do it themselves? They won't be able to bludgeon their way over through the scrum. And it's another one. What do you make of that decision? Well, the only reason why I'm not being ultra cynical and saying it's, uh, it's professional is that Roncero was actually struggling for about four or five minutes before that. 
but otherwise it's been very useful for Gloucester, hasn't it, in that sense. Well, Azam has played across the front row, but the decision is Leicester aren't allowed to push at those scrums. Here's Kafer. That close. Six minutes of added time. Vesti. Useless with the important tackle. They've not really got men over here. Booth has to go to ground. Gloucester's defence holding up. Murphy. It's a poor pull to Kafer. K runs into Delport. Gloucester don't want to concede the penalty either because that would lead to another line out. They may well have won the ball back. They have. And Gloucester are going back to Twickenham. They've held off the Leicester late surge. A big, big decision at the end. But it's the Cherry and Whites who are heading back to headquarters. It's Gloucester's day. They've won this semi-final by 16 points to 11. OK, just a quick word from Matt. Well, it was ultimately well, very tight, wasn't it? But two tries in three minutes from Gloucester, from first Marcel Garvey, and then James Simpson Daniel has taken Gloucester to Twickenham for the first time in 13 years. The Cherry and Whites, you can't believe